where the females have been able to procreate by themselves. There will be a time in the future when women do not need men to procreate. At the moment, the same thing is not happening for men. They do not have this success in their studies. So why the fuck would we be chasing men when that's what we have to look forward to? Once I learned that information, a switch was flipped because I realized at the right age of like 17 or however old I was, maybe 16, that I don't need a man. I don't want a man. gentlemen welcome back to another video we're starting this one off with the dog already dead so you know it's gonna be a good one but now let's head into this woman's story where she keeps uh switching between saying something decent and halfway logical uh to saying complete bullcrap so let's check her out to all my girls out there who are crying over a man right now because that man doesn't want to be with them let me ask you this why would you want to be with someone who doesn't want you? The I don't know. Why would you? Why would you chase the guys who clearly don't want you nor a relationship at all and keep in the friend zone all the guys who want to give you the world? Number one thing to look for in a relationship is that your partner wants to be with you. And if someone is showing that they don't have that much interest in you, why are you trying to prove to them that you're worth their time? Because let me tell you something, they're not worth yours. Do not waste your time with someone who doesn't want to be with you. Because that is the bare fucking minimum in a relationship. And there are a bunch of things that are also the bare minimum that you shouldn't have to ask for. And I guarantee if you are trying to convince someone who doesn't want to be with you that you're worth being with, they're also not going to be doing all these other bare minimum things either. You don't deserve the bare minimum anyway. So why would you accept less than the bare minimum from someone who doesn't want you? That's embarrassing. Grow up because you're fucking unreal. And I promise you, there are so many people out there who do want you. Go find them. Like, I don't think you understand how many times I've been told by a guy, like, how hard it is for them to get girls. Like, girls just have it so much easier than guys. Like, guys have to put in so much effort to get girls. Exactly. So if these guys have to put in so much more effort and they're out here doing it, they're not going to settle for a girl who doesn't want them. Some of them might. We're not talking about them. Why should you, when it's so easy for us to go and get a guy that wants us? You should not have to try and prove to someone what you're worth. They should already know what you're worth. Because you don't chase baby girl, you attract, okay? We do not chase men. And you know what? I'm about to tell you something. And once I found out this information myself, it completely changed my outlook on men. I no longer was like, oh, I want a boyfriend. I want this, I want that. And I found out this information when I was like 17 or something. Like I was young, young enough that I hadn't had a boyfriend yet. And therefore I did not ever get a boyfriend until I was 22 because I will not settle for anyone who does not treat me the way that I know I deserve to be treated. Yeah, right. So she didn't have a boyfriend until age 22 because she didn't want to settle for someone who wouldn't give her, you know, the maximum. Uh, yet you forgot to mention the part where you hooked up with Chad and Tyrone, you know, all the Chads around your city. You forgot to mention that part where you were a 304 riding the carousel, right? Like, what are we saying that you were... Uh, you had the V card until 22. Come on, man. They have literally completed successful studies with mice where the females have been able to procreate by themselves. There will be a time in the future when women do not need men to procreate. At the moment, the same thing is not happening for men. They do not have this success in their studies. So why the fuck would we be chasing men when that's what we have to look forward to? Once I what do you have to look forward to? Like Let's imagine the scenario, but just imagine because it will never happen, uh, that women do not need men to procreate. What do you win in, in that scenario? I don't understand. I mean, life is so much more than just procreation. Uh, we're not animals. There's so much going on. It's the same with friends. You don't need friends to survive. You know, you will not die and explode and disintegrate if you didn't have friends. Uh, but that's not the reason why you have friends in the first place, if that makes any sense. Like, why would you get rid of something if it doesn't, um, you know, if your life doesn't depend on it? This woman is making absolutely no sense. Uh, to say that men, you know, to say that all that the value that men provide to this world is just procreation is as stupid as it gets. 
men provide so many things from safety to uh, all, literally all the work uh, that is being done, you know, in the structures and everything is men. Like y you go out of home right now, you open the door, you go out and everything you see was built by men. All the buildings, all the roads, all the lights, all everything. Uh, the electricity is run by men. Oh, and by the five women who here and there have something to do with that. Uh, but yeah, 99% is men. So uh, even if that scenario comes where we don't need men to procreate, which it will never come, still, uh, you're trying to tell me that you can get rid of 50% of the population uh, and you can get rid of all that men are providing for and, it, and nothing will change? I learned that information, a switch was flipped because I realized at the right age of like 17 or however old I was, maybe 16, that I don't need a man. I don't want a man. I want someone in my life who adds to my already beautiful life. I don't need them in my life to make me happy. Because yeah, no, notice the, the oxymoron, the, the paradox. Uh, I don't want, I don't need a man, uh, but I want someone in my life to be a man. But, but I don't need a man, but I want someone to make my life even happier. Because my life is, ha is happy, but I still need someone. Uh, but I don't need him, you know what I mean? Jeez, man, why don't you stop with the coping and say that you need a man? You know, guys, the problem with today's dating, in my humble opinion, is that we have beggars that get to be choosers, you know? We have women who are thirsty for a man. They are, you know, they're trembling for a man. They want a man to fix their problems, uh, to fix their stupid mind who doesn't understand what it, what they even want they want they need a man uh, but at the same time they they prevent that from happening so they, they increase their standards they chase the impossible they don't give a chance to the good guys you know it's like you, you go into an ice cream stand and there are three flavors vanilla chocolate and strawberry and you pick whatever you pick vanilla because you know only three chance uh, only three um you know, three flavors, and well, I like vanilla, okay, so I'm gonna grab vanilla. But what happens is that then you go to another store, which has 27 flavors of ice cream, of all the fruits that you can think of, all the sweets, and then on top of the 27 flavors, you have like a um, hundred things that you can put on that ice cream, you know, like cookies or, you know, s s whatever, man, you, whatever. And then you have the, si the, the syrups as well, you know. Uh, there are so many options, there are so many combinations, there are so many things you can get. And then, you know, we have people who, who just stand there looking at all the options and they don't know what to get because they, they like this taste and this other taste and this other flavor and they like to add something on top of it but they also like the other thing and, and they want to add a syrup but they don't know which one and, and they just stand there for 20 minutes just not knowing what they want and when they get something... Uh, they're still not happy because they're thinking in the head, you know, maybe I could have gotten something better. So this is what happens to women. Uh, women have so many options in today's society thanks to womanism, dating apps, all the, all the nonsense, you know, social media. They have so many options, so many options that they cannot pick. They, they don't know what they want. They don't know what they're looking for. Uh, they have a, a sense of things that they like and they chase them. Uh, but they don't know the end goal, right? They don't know what exact ice cream they want to get. Uh, they're just looking at everything and saying, I want this. Uh, no, no, I want this. No, but I want that. I want that, but better. I, I'd like to add to that. And when they finally get their ice cream, so when they finally meet a man and are somehow able to keep a man, they, they, they start comparing him to everyone else. You know, like, well, I have this man already, but I'd, I'd really like this other one. Or I'd like to improve and upgrade on the one I already have. And they can never pick. So we have beggars who actually need men. But they get to be choosers. And their cho the, the choices are essentially crap. So let's continue. I already bring that to myself. Why would I need someone else to make me happy? Particularly a man. Like, please. That is embarrassing. You're so much better than that. Being yours is full, line number seven, while I get ready for dinner. The very tough conversation of when you should hook up with him. Here's the thing. Most men, not all, but most men want to hook up right off the bat. Later on down the road, they will decide if they want a relationship. The key here, if you're looking for a relationship and respect, 
and not just to hook up, is to obviously not give him what he wants right at first. What this is going to do is essentially guide him into not just thinking about you as someone that he hooks up with. So if you just want to hook up with him, go ahead and do it. But if not, then don't. Key is to make him work for it. It is then that you will become the girl he wants a relationship with without even realizing it. Is it yeah, what a good advice. <laughs> so if Chad wants a one night stand and you don't give it to him, apparently that's going to make him want to commit, right? So Chad just wanted to have some fun, but you said no. And then he thought to himself, holy, holy cow, I have to marry this woman. It makes perfect sense. And we have uh, <laughs> something like Voldemort looking right here. You, you take her nose off and it looks like Voldemort uh, putting on a cake on her face and uh, talking like someone punched her in the, in the throat. But she is apparently she's teaching us how to be irresistible. All right. Is it a game? Maybe. But the thing here is men love games and sometimes you have to play along to get what you want. Playing these... I wouldn't even call them games, like just stupid schemes and uh, little bullcrap maneuvers that women do. We don't like that. Who like that? Who likes that? Nobody likes that. Nobody wants to be part of these uh, third grade games that you're playing, man. Cut the crap. I'm silly, and this may just be me, but I would much rather have a man leave me for not hooking up with him than leave me right after he gets what he wants. The thing with men is that they love a game. And if we give it up too soon, they're kind of like defeated because they don't have to work for it. Some men, I should say. There's also this thing called the three date rule that men have. And basically, if she doesn't give it up by the third date, he should just stop pursuing her. This actually happened to me once. And while it sucked, I was relieved because the trash took itself out. Now you have men who want relationships and then you have men who want to hit and quit. A man that's worthwhile and the man you should be pursuing will have no problem waiting. Do not give it up early on for the wrong reason. Just be No, the, the man who has self-respect will say, I will wait, you know, for the good for the good woman, for the good wife, for the good future mother mother, excuse me. Uh but you're not that girl, you know? If if you've given to the previous fifteen chads in one day what I have to wait for several weeks or months yeah, no, thank you. You can go F yourself. Because you think, oh, it's going to make him like me. It's going to be so good that he's going to realize that he likes me. Newsflash. Hooking up with a man early on is not going to make him like you. I'm sorry to say. One thing that I think you should remember is that you have so much more to offer than your sexuality. And you should be treated as such. Because as you know, you are a high value woman. <laughs> no, you're not. Uh, what else do you have to offer? She said, oh, we have so much to offer other than S3 actuality. What else? Can you name one thing? <laughs> You're a complete zero in terms of personality. Like, we can see your entitlement. I can see your freaking entitlement right through my screen. What do you have to offer? You bring nothing to the table, man. And guys, can we appreciate? The, the, the one thing that this woman has is some editing skills if she does them by herself. Like, wind back the video and this woman edited like 45 clips together while she was putting on makeup it's really funny how they make these videos while putting on makeup like oh i'm so busy i'm on a schedule i have to do uh, two things at once and then they spent like four hours editing <laughs> so funny man I want to share with you a pattern in my love life that was really hard for me to spot and understand, but once I did, made a huge difference in my healing. For a lot of my early to mid-20s, I was in relationships or situationships with emotionally unavailable men. Wow, really? Now that's surprising. <laughs> Gentlemen, we've covered this woman on the channel uh, quite a few times. Even in recent videos, you've seen her already. She's a dating coach. Uh, one of the things I desperately need in my life, you know, to fix it. She's a dating coach, she's single, I can't quite remember if she's a single mother, but she's over 30 and single, so that says enough. Uh, but she's out here, you know, just teaching the world. Leading by example, I'm a 30-year-old single miserable uh, <laughs> woman. But guys, I know a lot about dating. You know, coaches don't play the game. 
So obviously that was a pattern in and of itself that I knew I needed to work through. But there was one other commonality between almost all of the guys that I had a romantic interest in. Usually at some point when they were expressing to me why they weren't yet ready for a relationship, they would say something along the lines of, you're somebody that I could see myself with. You're somebody that I'd want to marry. You are wife material, girlfriend material, whatever. And I'm just not ready for that now. So we can't be together. Yeah, and that's the thing that guys always say. Is it that hard to figure out? I mean, I'm a man and I know that that's what guys say. Shouldn't a woman be, you know, more understanding of what it actually means, given that this has happened to her many times? Because I've had no men tell me that bullcrap, but I know it's just a made up story. You know, for him not trying to say, I don't really care about anything that, than what's between your legs. If men really wanted to date you and you were this such great person, you would make for a beautiful wife, etc. Uh, they will just commit to you. You know, isn't that logic? I, I don't understand how you can date 30 men that repeat those same, the same nonsense to you and not figure out that it's just a way uh, for ghosting you. And I know now that a big part of the reason they were saying these things is because I was somebody who overextended, overgave of myself in the early phases of relationships. I was giving in ways that were not reciprocal and not mutual because I wanted to make myself of so much value that they would choose me. I wanted to seem so worthy of being chosen because I brought so much to the table and was going to make their life better in all these ways. Yeah, so even though this woman is a dummy, uh, if she tried to give the world and you know make uh, his life the best as possible to any guy in you know to all the guys who also wanted this with her she will be married till now right like it's so easy to analyze women these days because if, if you put in in context if, if you you know compare to reality the narrative that they're trying to sell uh you will easily find out that it didn't happen that way Again, if this woman did all those things she mentioned for the guys who are emotionally available, the guys who are looking for a relationship, the guys who are interested in her, she would be married till now, but she's not. Thus, she gave all that effort, if we presume it's true, to chads who were never interested in it. So who's to blame? Hearing that line that I'm not ready for you yet line, but like you're somebody I would want to marry. What that did was actually keep me stuck in this cycle because it made me believe that, okay, well, this just isn't the right person or it isn't the right time. If I just, you know, hold out, maybe they'll come around or I just need to wait for the next right person who will be ready for everything that I bring to the table. And while yes, timing is a huge part of it. And I am such an advocate for trusting the timing of your life. We also need to not abdicate responsibility for the way yeah, yeah yeah so talking about a uh, timing of life you've missed prince charming many ways uh excuse me many times along the way you've did that you some women they are 30 years old some women are 40 years old and they say ah you know the time just hasn't come yet yeah it will come when you're 90 trust me uh, and, and your time for meeting prince charming has long passed its way you met more than 50 guys i reckon that wanted something with you but you just didn't care about them and you're still waiting guys this woman is still waiting for chad to come around she's still waiting for that timing where magically uh the sort of guys who never treated her well and never cared about her will suddenly start to now that she's 30. Ways that we are showing up in our relationship patterns that aren't healthy for us. So yes, of course, I had to learn to not listen to the part of me that was attracted to emotionally unavailable men, or rather to listen to it, learn from it, and heal it so that I could be attracted to emotional availability instead. But I also had to learn from this repetitive pattern, this commonality where men were seeing how much uh, service I could bring into their lives and seeing that translate into this, oh, she's somebody who would take care of me the way, the way that a wife should take care of a man sort of pattern. And I had to realize that that's actually not something I wanted for myself. I 
don't want to be in a partnership dynamic where I'm taking care of the other person's mental, emotional, and physical needs all the time. I want to be with somebody who knows how to regulate and do those things for themselves and be in a healthy interdependent dynamic. So that meant that I needed to learn to not over give in the beginning stages of a relationship in order to try to prove my worth. I had to get comfortable with the law of reciprocity and not trying to fill a role in somebody's life in the early stages of a relationship before we've even built a foundation for our connection. And most importantly, I had to get comfortable and confident with sourcing my self-worth from within rather than sourcing it from another person choosing me based on how much I do for them. And ladies, if any guy tells you that you are wife or girlfriend material, but that he's just not ready for that yet, do not take that as an invitation to try harder. Run the All right, we will cut the crop right here, gentlemen. These women, whenever I hear them just speaking and speaking, blabbering so many things about how much they understand dating, uh, for me, it's like a man in the desert all by himself. He's been walking three months by himself and he starts to have hallucinations. He starts to be delusional uh, and he starts just imagining people around him and, th and saying, yeah, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. And then we're going to do this next other thing. And then uh, we're going to just do some crazy things, you know, just completely delusional. And you're just watching from above that man, you know, uh, thinking to yourself, damn, how delusional and lost this person is. It's the same with these women. They, they talk about dating. They talk about what they've learned, how they're going to apply it to the next date, how they're going to get married, have kids. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Now I've learned. Now I know my worth. No, madam, you're, you've hit the wall already and there's nothing waiting for you. Nothing but boxed wine and cats. But with that, gentlemen, on that thought, we'll finish the video. Leave me your thoughts in the comments, and I'll be happy to see you next time. Have a good one.